Hey, 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 it's your little small garden right here with you guys. We're going to walk around our different beds, maybe give you some ideas. We got a little bit of everything going on. This is a monthly blog. This one's going to be early February. Then we'll do one early March, early April, so forth and so on. You guys hang around. Hey, leave some comments down there. Let me know what you're doing. Peace, y'all. All right, first let's check out the west bed. All right, well, the west garden. First bed is not a bed. That's the setup, this one layer of block with three pallets. Gets it up a foot between the block and the pallet. That's a foot up. Already got some herb containers over here, so it's getting more sun. Got a little stool to set on. And this little gap will be grow bags. I'll grow some potatoes in here and probably put two of them at the end of the table. And then got a little mulching area going on. Just getting started. Got some packing peanuts already slid down in there. I'll explain that in a second. And back over here, first ever raised bed for Jules. 56 years old and I've never used a raised bed in my life. Always in the ground or a container. Now, Don, all of this is trash. It's gonna have a big old dump going on. Getting dumpster in here, or borrow my neighbor's truck, and get rid of that hoop, that drain pipe. That's a handy drain pipe, by the way, but it's old. The netting's busted on it and I pulled it out of the ground and all the packing peanuts are falling around. Yep, and then more, that's not trash. That's my fountain. Got to replace the pump, which is laying in here with all of this junk. Oh, I hate this. This used to be my man cave. That's what happens when your kids get older and leave stuff. Yeah, got to get that straight. You can't see them over in that corner. Is actually a two bare root blueberry plant, plants, excuse me, that I put in back in the early fall. Yeah. That's that grapevine, if you follow the channel. That's what it looks like in the dead of winter. And then this long maroon thing is actually going to be a weed mat. That's one of two I got. They're 16 foot wide. And yeah, about 30 foot long a piece, something like that. 20 to 30. I'll show you what I'm going to do with that in a second. That's actually a part of a textile belt for carding up cloth. And once they wear out, they're worn out. So my buddy, he grabbed a big old roll of it. So he's cut me off a few pieces. Again, I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that. And then there's one more thing over here. You might be interested in. You can see those packing peanuts. Ah, my yard looks like the side of a land field. Look at that. That little stick coming up. I thought I'd be cute and get a goji berry. And I talked to my brother and he said, get rid of it. That stuff spread six foot at a time, thorny as hell. So that's gonna have to be moved probably up front. I got a big old ivy patch up there. But yeah, this is gonna be the West Garden. Lots of container gardening. Got a lot of cleanup to do still. And then raised bed, you know, we'll do radish, carrot, stuff like that over there. Probably my rutabaga. And then some more fruit, blueberry and grapes. Okay, now we're gonna take you to the northwest bed. Alrighty, let's have us a stroll over here to the northwest bed. This is a brand new idea. There's the other part of that textile mat belt that's gonna become a weed mat. Been back here messing with this all the last year beginning I took out a bunch of azaleas they were old leggy and a bunch of vines <clears throat> you can still see the vine problem slowly but surely I'm getting that out <clears throat> um, what we're gonna do that post lean in there is gonna come out about six foot and then I'll put chicken wire on it and make a trellis the plan right now is to grow snake gourd there that uh, Sarah at the big blue house homestead gave me there will be another weed mat three foot wide that's gonna run along the back of that fence. And I'll probably pour some concrete 
at the bottom of the fence to keep the weeds down. So about half of that three foot is where I'll put some uh, cords. I'll probably right where this mat's laying run um, butternut, a pumpkin, something, some kind of winter squash to come up through here. Maybe that net pumpkin even. That is a good product. So it can run, it should run towards the sun. Also need to prune this soon. This is my Bruce plum tree. She's about 15. Low production last year. So I'm gonna try one more time. Give her a nice pruning this year. All right. And again, there's a couple of blueberries back here. Bear, bear root. I got three total varieties and I just can't remember which is which. <laughs> they do fruit up I'll be able to tell that's the old mulch pile behind the north bed old hedge that hedge I'm, I was planning on taking all this leftover hedge out over here it will be cleaned up and I'll just leave these bushes those are rows of Sharon so they're a pollinator attractor so that'll pretty much stay but I think now I'm gonna leave this and I'm telling you why Eastern Tui. I had never seen one until earlier this year and uh, looked it up. I'm not a bird man. I love birds, but I don't know birds by sight unless they're obvious. Um, so I looked it up and Eastern Tui likes to hang on the edge of fields and you hardly ever see them. You just hear them. But this bird is not that skittish. It's not as friendly as a cardinal. If you come out while it's eating, he will go over there on that brick wall and eat my uh, bird seed. He'll get up in there, but if you come out, he immediately dives behind the wall so you can't see him. Um, but still, for him to get that close to the house is pretty rare. So yesterday, he was over here and uh, messing around. My dog came out and was walking, and that bird jumped in his hedge and just hung out. And then when the coast was clear, he flew out of there. So I think I might leave this hedge. He may be, he and his buddy, they might be using that for cover. All right, let's get a better shot of this. So this bed eventually will run. That picket fence right there is coming out. All this trash has got to be cleaned up. As you can see, Jules has a lot to work to do. All right, so this, of course, there's some hen bit in there, but that's mostly just some various wild clover and whatnot. It'll be all tilled out, re-amended, all that good stuff. Um, then you see these trellis, those are cedar. Got them at the end of the season from Lowe's, very, very cheap, like buy one, get the other three free. So I did. Um, I think they were running for 20 bucks a piece. And then I got all four of those for 20 bucks. Yep. So anyway, this is going vertical, obviously. Beans are going back in here. Lots and lots of beans. Um, and even some bush beans. And the same thing, part of it will actually be cucumbers and then some bush cucumbers. All right, so they won't be mixed like just here's a cucumber, here's a bean, but you know, I'll, I'll find dedicated spots. And I think in the middle one there, I'm gonna try to grow a cantaloupe again from Sarah at the Big Blue House. I think I'm gonna try to put a cantaloupe in the middle of it all. I gotta do my companion planning research to make sure I'm not screwing up, but that should work. And then this side of the north bed, the foreground, will be the low riders, right? You can see leaks right there. So they're riding through. There are some chives about in this area that have died back. I'm hoping they come back see right there that's still carrot in the ground I need to get that out and the shadow is getting in the way sorry um, that's giant red mustard that's still running and these are my failed Brussels sprouts uh, me and Grofully Jenna were talking about this and uh, my planting was about 30 days late because my nurser didn't have them until then and apparently it has something to do with the length of the days for these to get up and ready. So they never quite made it. Uh, they're still living, but I'm not gonna get Brussels sprouts out of that this year. 
And that's a little garlic tucked in there. There's a couple of garlics hanging around for next summer. A few more smaller carrots back here. That's actually a lemon thyme transplanted from this garden over here. I moved it back over here just to put it on the edge of the trench. We call this the North Trench. All right. And right below that cinder block, well, not below it, but in that gap right there, I took half of an Italian tomato tree fruit, cut it in half, and I buried it right there. Just another Jules experiment. Either it does or it doesn't. And then just to finish off this part, that is going to be where I store uh, wood. And that, the big logs there are coming out. That's where I'm going to keep my uh, uh, wood for smoking. I've got another plum tree that I'm going to take down. So I'll store the rest of my peach there. And then I'll have a plum tree for about three years to smoke meat with. All right, now we're going to this corner that I'm getting ready to straighten up. The northeast side. Check this out. All right. Well, before we take that walk, I just I left one thing out here. This little gap right here in front of this hedge where I'm extending the bed, I'm going to run spaghetti squash there without a doubt. Uh, somebody gave me some. I'm sorry. I can't remember who gave me that right off the top of my head. I've received a lot of seed in the fall and Christmas season. But the same principle, put it on the north side and it should run to the sun. I'm sure it will. <clears throat> then I'll probably nip it about here. I'm trying to get my grass back. Uh, this is mostly uh, a winter grass, like rye mix. Uh, I had to put something down to keep the weeds out. <clears throat> All that higher stuff is that rye grass. So I'm gonna have to mow it down eventually and reseed it with my fescue. Um, but all that damage came from the neck pumpkin. Um, in this yard, if you leave it like that, you, your hen bit, chickweed's gonna come back, and crabgrass, so you gotta get on top of that. Let's walk. You can see old Jules got a lot of work to do. That's another type of azalea. Beautiful, beautiful pink blooms. I'll shoot some pictures of that again this spring when it gets up. We circle back around. That's where my fruit wood is going to go for smoking. These are some old decaying timbers. I don't know what year they were made, so I got them way away from my garden beds in case they're leaching something. They'll be going in the dumpster. Now, this is the, basically the end of the northeast. It goes all the way over there explain what's going to happen in this section of the video so that is a blackberry plant this entire area used to be my blackberry patch for whatever reason I took it all out I just got in the mood one day I said man this stuff is so tough to keep up with it spreads like crazy I mean it really likes it in here if I let it go and probably be in the yard by now but that was years ago and I said man I need to get my blackberries back so there they are Looks like my primo cane there, not doing too good. I already pruned them, pruned them out. Well, we'll have to see what happens. That's an old grafted grapevine. Just doesn't get enough sun. It does produce, but it's not prolific. Uh, I'm gonna try again though. Pay a lot more attention to the base and get some nice mulch in there and feed the heck out of it and see if I can jack her up. And then there's another blackberry and if they spread or I might propagate them just kind of fill in around here and get my blackberry hedge back and then over here you know, one of them snapped off when I put it in the ground it's about right there you see a little pile of leaves there is a little short uh, trunk coming out you can see that one clearly that's yusta berry so the yusta berry is a new addition blackberries replacing what we already had a long time ago and then at the end that's a granny smith that's never been pruned another mistake 
I made. Now you can take these back a third of the time to wherever you want it to end. So say you want it to end right there, you wouldn't cut it right there the first year. You'd cut a third of the way to it, then another third, and then in the third year you'd get it right there. Um, that's the proper way to do it anyway. Now back here, this is my old brush pile. And that's a bunch of clutter that came from behind the shed, which I'll explain shortly. And this is the old swing wood pile. Now a lot of this will be trashed in the dumpster. A lot of it will be kept and reorganized and tidied up. All this will be cleared out, including that biggest tree there. That's actually a gold apple tree, but it's never done anything. But I might keep it just in case. I'm not having made, I have not made my mind up on that. But this is where the textile belt goes. All right, I'm gonna clean all this out. And this will just be one big black mat. And then I'll have raised uh, container beds in here for plants that like the shade. Uh, there are some vegetables that will do okay in the shade, leafy type stuff. But this will be more like ferns and dusty millers pasta, stuff like that, that can deal with shade. So I'm just trying to make this prettier. So right now it looks like I'm living on a farm 20 miles out of town. I'm gonna cut all these, whatever you call those things. That's coming up off of the crepe myrtle. Never ending cutting that crap. I got to walk through here. I've had a tetanus shot, but tetanus shot, but I still don't want to cut myself on metal. That's an old gardening table that's seen its better days. Yeah, messy mess. And then boop, boop, boop. So back here will be. Well, you can see I just put that there. I got to level some stuff out, but uh, this will be like a potting station, some plants and stuff. I'll probably put some hanging baskets on these posts just to pretty it up. Got my weed mat down. It's not completely tacked because I still need to do some under the mat work. But by the time you get here, you're in my baby. The East. This is the East Garden. Yeehaw. What are the plans here, Jules? Hmm. I don't know. This thing has looked like something different every year. Even now it's different because I took out a crab apple tree. Yeah. yeah. I'm still gonna use that trench for okra. That's gonna be my okra trench until it <clears throat> messes up. Again, I'll do research to see how often you can replant it in the same spot. But I think it'll be okay for two years. And there's some stuff in there. Uh, the shorter stuff there is Vates collards. And that's actually a rogue lettuce plant. That's a seed drop plant. And then that's a scatter plot of lettuce. This is a romaine and a buttercrotch mixed in. It's still alive, so I'm hoping when it warms up, this stuff will start growing again. I do not know if it will. And that's Italian flat leaf parsley right there. But anyway, back to uh, what are the plans here? Well, the beans and cukes go over on the other one. And tomatoes will be over there too, my pasted tomatoes. Over here, definitely gonna be some mild peppers again, some hot peppers, some eggplant. And then everything else will just be based on companion planting. Will it do well or not? You know, get some non-crop stuff, just stuff of interest, just to see if it'll do. And the cinder block edge will be finished this year, I think. Thinking about boxing it all in and start treating it like a raised bed under the ground there. If you till it up, you're talking a good six to eight inches of good loose soil. Now, I've been working this for years, but obviously if I get another eight inches on top, I could grow anything over here I want it. I mean, root crops or above ground, whatever. Yeah. And these uh, holes in the wall, that's where I'm gonna plant my uh, hot peppers. And then on the opposite side will be my mild peppers in case I wanna keep some seed. I don't want any of the Frankensteins. Even though I did save a couple of Frankensteins this year to see if I can get them to grow again. 
But if you have an imagination, black mat all the way through that jungle will just be a nice clean black mat and a shade garden that looks like a nursery. And now let's go see what's going on in the south beds, I guess it's gonna be. You'll see what I'm talking about. Now let's stroll here. <laughs> ah, what a mess this is. Another mess for Jules. I'm gonna be busting butt here for the next six to eight weeks, lots to do. But this is actually a peony bed. I uh, gotta get these this wood out of there so those bulbs come up. I'll probably leave the peonies and I have to do some serious companion planting research if I wanna put any vegetables in the foreground or I may just leave it. Um, this area is the worst in the backyard still for weeds and it's got the wire grass centipede and Bermuda or what the heck ever. And it takes forever to get rid of that stuff. Um, it wouldn't have came back if we'd have planted it with grass, but we didn't plant anything in there. So the wire grass came back. So not sure what exactly we're going to do with that back there. Uh, all that wood that's uh, cedar again, um, that's going to be pergola basically where that carpet is. So that's going to be nice. Uh, the kitchen, a little pergola place, that fire pit y'all have seen on lives. That was Feather Celosia. Look how big that thing got. So more feathers going in there. That's a pollinator magnet. I highly re recommend that stuff. So this is the south bed. Uh, this is where I'm going to put onions for sure. Well, I say for sure. Now I got that raised bed. I still I need to rethink things. But about down to two foot away from that propane tank, and about two and a half foot off this fence, that'll be the little south bed. This time of year it gets a lot of shade, but when we get to spring and summer, it gets a heck of a lot of sun because it comes up earlier east. The earth tilts, obviously. So get a lot of sun right here. That again, that's Vates collards. As you can tell, we still have stuff in the ground that we're actually eating on now in January. Um, that's garlic for next year. I think there's seven in there, something like that. And then as we walk on down, there's some more containers. Uh, all the container herbs are gonna be moved to that west container bed right there um, and some garlic some more garlic that plant will stay right where it is that is now in its third year that is rosemary and we use that year round and then over here still digging out trumpet vine if you know anything about trumpet vine it's there people complain about ivy ivy's nothing to get out compared to trumpet vine and that's why that fountain's not over here. I gotta clean all this out. Um, we're gonna put shade bulbs on the left. And on this side, it's gonna be marjoram and oregano permanent. Just put it in here and leave it. You can see some bulbs. Those are those, uh, I think they call them bluebell, English bluebell. You can see them starting to come up. So we'll have the bulbs in here, but it'll be mixed with uh, what will become big bushes of marjoram and oregano. So I still consider it part of the south bed, even though it's not over here with the rest of everything. So we'll have onions, probably greens, whatnot, herbs in the ground, and then herbs and whatnot right here. Uh, of course you cook with onions. Might even put some peppers over here so we don't have to walk so far. See the kitchen's right there. That's why I moved all my herbs closer to the house is because it's easier to get to them when you're cooking you know you want some oregano we're gonna come right here bam it's all the oregano you can stand obviously we're already doing that with the rosemary well there you have it that is the February tour even though I'm recording this in late January uh, and we will see in a month how far I get now I'm gonna tell you this all those projects are not going to be done even by the beginning of summer. It's just too much for one person to do. 
um, there will be priorities, right? Obviously, the first priority is getting the seed in the ground at the right time. So the four beds that are in play, they come first. Obviously, the first thing I got to do is fill up that raised bed. Then everything else, like, okay, we'll work on this a little bit. We'll work on that a little bit. Just a little bit at a time, you know. <clears throat> I didn't even bring up the shed. I got to clean that out, too. <laughs> That'll be our priority. Anyway, you guys be blessed. Don't forget later this week, our 530 Live. Drop in, say hello, leave some comments. All right, y'all know the deal. Three, two, one. Peace, y'all.